And my dudes, uh, what's happening, man? This is Trent, and today we're gonna talk about Procreate. This is an absolute beginner's guide. You love it, I love it, it's dirt cheap, and it's pretty easy to use, and it's the greatest thing about it is the capacity for it. Man, you can do really high-level, professional-quality illustration with this, and uh, especially if you've got yourself the right equipment. Now, the thing that I'm working on, I'm using the iPad Pro. This is the 11-inch, and I also have the Apple Pencil 2. Now, this is pretty much exclusive to those people who have an iPad. Procreate is not on any other device. There's no desktop, no Windows, nothing. It only works with the iPad, which is okay if you've got an Apple Pencil 2. I wouldn't try using Procreate with your thumb or anything. Some people do, but I don't think it's optimal. It's like trying to play golf with a hot dog, like an oversized sausage or something. I mean, sure you'll be able to hit the ball, but is it gonna go where you want it to? First up, when you open it up, go to gallery. When you're in gallery, you're gonna see a screen that looks like this. You're gonna see some example artwork of some really high level stuff. We're not comparing ourselves to that, but you should know that that kind of thing is possible on this device, which is pretty cool and on this in this software. The first thing we're gonna do though is click on this plus sign up in the top right to create a new canvas. And in doing so, people always ask, what resolution should I be drawing at? Well, guess what, man? You could just click on the paper one that's in this list, or you could use the standard default or a uh, square, or you could just do the screen size. But I almost feel like the screen size is a little too low resolution. So I always do something that's closer to like the eight and a half by 11. That way, if we print it out on an eight and a half by 11 sheet, we know it'll be at least a decent resolution. You don't wanna see pixels, basically. If you're seeing pixels, you're zoomed in too far. All right, to select a brush, we click on this button up here that looks like a brush. So the first thing we wanna click on is probably the sketching tab. And then most of these are just like normal pencils. You expect, I'm gonna pick a different color. This button over here, this big color wheel, um, I pop that up by clicking on the little circle of the color. And what's neat about this is you can pick uh, the, how dark you want your color to be, uh, how light you want it to be, and what, uh, how much saturation you want in there. And we're just gonna pick like a, a black for this. There are other options along the bottom. Whenever you see a window like this, Procreate does this thing where they give you different ways to look at that window uh, by clicking on these tabs along the bottom. And this is really neat if you wanna use some color harmonies or something like that. But as a painter, I tend to just go with this. And I think you know if you're a beginner with this, you probably wanna just stick with this. And I would also recommend maybe just sticking with doing some black and white drawing in the beginning because you want it to be familiar. So um, what I would do is I just start finding some like drawing some lines out, maybe like draw a little sphere or something using a pencil tool and get used to that idea of like how you can sketch and get used to the feeling, get comfortable with that feeling of like the harder you press, the, either the bigger the brush is gonna get or the darker the pencil gets. One of the neat things about the Apple Pencil too is if you tilt it on its side a little bit, you can kind of do this smudgy, it's the side of the graphite pencil and the harder you press, you can get this chiaroscuro look, which is really cool. If you've learned much about how to render with pencil, you'll be very glad to see that you can get this kind of rendering using the side of a pencil tool in Procreate. How cool is that? I've used a lot of digital art pens and this is pretty much exclusive to the Apple Pencil. I haven't seen that with any other competitors. So going back to our brushes, another one that I like to use a lot of is in this painting category. These are comfortable for me, but I, I think that you should find the ones that are comfortable for you. And I found that the Nika Rule is a pretty good one because the harder you press, the darker it gets, but otherwise it feels like this really neat chalk. If you just barely press with that, you get this really neat chalk kind of a feel and this is really really useful if you've seen my recent procreate drawings you'll recognize some of these textures because i use them an awful lot uh, so i want to encourage you while you're looking at brushes go through this list and try to find some that just feel right to you some people might really gravitate towards those calligraphy brushes or airbrushes and things like that charcoals there's some really neat charcoals in here the carbon stick really neat textures, right? Um, there is a way to cu start to customize your brushes, but because this is an introduction to for beginners to procreate, I don't wanna bombard you with that. There are enough really awesome built-in brushes that you can use just to get started with it. When you are ready to start customizing your brushes, you can click on that thumbnail of the stroke and you can see all the different functions and features that you can do to modify that. But for the time being, that's one of those deep things. Like don't dig into that if you're a beginner, just get comfortable with finding some brushes that already kind of work for you. So 
you can just pull this up and doodle with some pencil brushes whenever you've got like a free minute just to get comfortable with it and remember that it's okay to just doodle around and like feel around to find what brushes feel right to you uh, the next thing i want to cover at since we're talking about brushes is these two sliders along the right side you'll notice that this one adjusts the brush size and uh, what that is is like it's the maximum amount that it can reach so let me let me press like you'll see with pencils it's not as apparent so let me let me switch to a brush that it's going to be a little bit more apparent we were just talking about the painting brushes and the nico rule right so if if i have the nico rule selected and let's say that i have my brush size set really low and i'm pressing it full pressure that's how thin that line is but let's say i move that up and i press it full pressure you see how it's much bigger so that adjusts the limits of the brush that you're working with let's do the same thing but with opacity uh, so if we have this set to full and we we draw a line at full pressure it's going to be at full opacity but let's say that we do that at like 11 mm, percent opacity and at full pressure we're only going to reach 11 percent of its full opacity and so this can be useful for a lot of different things uh, just below that you have this little undo button and that will undo everything that you just did but let's say we're like oh man i went too far well there's the redo which is pretty cool it's like time travel but bam i also want to mention that you can two finger tap to undo and three finger tap to redo anywhere on the screen if you should find that you want to pick up a color that you already placed down like maybe really like this medium gray or something like that you can use this button here or you can uh, hold down one finger on the canvas and then drag it around to whatever color it is that you want. So let me give you an example. Let's say that I've mixed a little bit of uh, red or orange here. Let's, let's, let's pick a, an orange. And let's say that I've, I've drawn out some orange and then I mixed in a little bit of like a red with it. And I, what I really want though, what I really want is that color that happened on accident right in between there. So I can hold down my finger and I can pick that color from there and now that color is loaded into my brush. You see what I'm saying? Let's go even further to illustrate the point more. Uh, let's say I've blended in a little bit of purple to this and I'm going to do a little bit of blending and I've smeared it and I've gotten a really neat like pinkish color there and I, let's say I really want to get that really awesome little color right there. I hold down my one finger on the canvas and then when I let go that's now loaded into my brush. So that's how you can do some color picking, which is really super, super handy. Another thing while we're talking about brushes, I want to show you one more thing that you might want to know about. You might be wondering, how do I get a straight line? Well, one way is, of course, you can just get a ruler out <laughs> and put it on your screen. But let's say you don't want to do that. The best way to do it is if you start a stroke, you see how it's crooked. I never lifted the Apple Pencil from the screen. And because of that, I have this like perfectly straight line. When I let go, it snaps it as perfect. And you can create perspective grids this way. Or if you're doing surfaces like uh, buildings and things like that. And you'll see how it looks very squiggly. But as long as I hold it down, it straightens it out. And when I let go, it uh, it becomes this perfectly straight line. Earlier, you saw me blending some colors using the smudge tool, and I use this an awful lot. So let's uh, let's take a closer look at it and see what it does. Right now, it has a texture on it that's called stucco, and this is my favorite texture, and it's the thing that made me fall in love with procreate is the stucco brush because it looks so just textury and just miffed up and i like that i like that really organic look that really organic feel and what's really neat to get this very uh papery kind of like it, what it looks like is kind of like if you ever did chalk drawings as a kid and you put a little piece of paper down on like the concrete and then you rub out some like some chalk over the top of that you pick up all those textures underneath and so the smudge tool will help you to blend your colors together. It will help you to get a very organic looking natural brush stroke across all of your drawing. And the other thing I want to tell you while you're doing this, dudes, you look at this drawing that I've got right now. It's garbage. You're not trying to make something cool right now. I'm just playing around with those tools. Like find the things that feel really good to you. And that's going to be where you're going to find that like enjoyment in it. Don't put pressure on yourself to make something awesome the first time you open a program. Like try to just find brushes and tools and things that seem really neat for you to use. Like, oh, I could do some cool stuff with that. Oh, you know, and then you get to play around with it. That's where the that's where it's going to stick. 
you know, when you start to realize, oh, I can have some fun with this particular brush. If you find that one brush, you can do a whole drawing just with that one. And then it's what's kind of neat is it's all disposable. It's all digital. So you can just erase it and start over with the next one. Don't put pressure on yourself when you're learning new software. While we're exploring the smudge brush, I want to cover another thing. If you click on that again, you, you'll notice that all your brushes pop up and you're like, wait a minute. These are all the brushes that I was looking at. You're saying that I could have a, uh, you're saying that I could have a, uh, a, a, a smudge brush that looks like a pencil? Yes, absolutely. You can smudge using the same shape and treatment that a pencil brush gives you. So you'll notice this isn't drawing like a pencil, but if I smear it and smudge it into another color, it treats that as if it's smearing it. So think of it just like it's a stamp almost. It's, you're just using the shape of the stamp to perform a different function. But I really love that stucco. So I'm gonna make sure that I leave it back on artistic and it's at the very top, it's stucco. And just to make sure, look at that. Oh, I love it, love it so much. It's just a pleasure to play around with. The harder you press, the more of that texture you're gonna to get too. Obviously you have the eraser tool and the eraser tool, what do you think is gonna happen? It's obviously just gonna erase out. Um, you can also change the shape of your eraser tool into whatever brush that you've got as well. But to really illustrate how to use the eraser tool, we're gonna to need to understand uh, layers just a little bit. Now I'm going to give you a brief overview of layers by clicking on this little thing that looks like overlapping squares. We pull up the layer stack. Uh, if you click on uh, the plus symbol here, we create a new layer. Now what we have, imagine it like you've got layers of glass and we just created a new layer of glass and we placed it on top of everything else. Now if we paint on this layer of glass, just like what we were talking about before, let me go back to doing, let's do it in yellow just to really communicate this. So if we draw something on this layer of glass, it's as if we're putting, let's say like acrylic paint on that layer of glass, right? And let's say that we're like, nah, I don't really like that. Well, you can use that eraser tool and you can erase something out. And because that eraser tool is set to a soft edge airbrush, we can kind of erase out just an edge of it if we wanted to. This also applies to all the scaling and opacity. And um, you know, when we were talking about how to change your brush size, it also adjusts that. But uh, even further, let's, let's dig in a little bit further on what that means and what you can do with this. Because we're just erasing what's on that layer. And in fact, if we wanted to, we could just make that invisible, you know, um, just to see what's on that layer. This is great if you're unsure of something, like you wanna to try to redraw a character's nose or you wanna to try to redraw their hair, but you're not really sure if that's the hairstyle you want yet. Um, you could draw that hair just on its own layer and then you can make it, you know, switch on or switch off the visibility of it. If you click on this little N here, uh, that means normal, it's a normal layer. And if you click on that, you suddenly get all these other options for things that you can do with the layer as well, other effects and things. What's really interesting is that you can change the opacity of that. So much like when we're talking about opacity with, with our brush stroke, we can lessen how transparent it is. So this is almost like if it is, if it was drawn on glass, it's almost like if we made the entire sheet of glass a little bit less opaque, you know? Layers are complex and there's a lot that you can do with them. But for the sake of simplicity, because this is a beginner's walkthrough, I'm just gonna show you a couple of the, my favorite ones, starting with the multiply layer. Now multiply is great if you want to just add the color on that layer to the layer below it. So because we have yellow on this layer, if we set that to multiply, it's going to just add that yellow to the gray and black that we have on the layer below it. It won't mix them or blend them in an interesting way. It's literally just going to add them together. So like if you were to add blue and yellow, it would make green but it'd be a dark green because they're, it's adding the, the values of both of them together. Now, if we set our layer to multiply or darken, uh, this is the darken layer, we can go ahead and paint in our line work. So this is how you can get a comic book effect. I actually recommend doing the multiply layer effect um, or layer mode to get comic book flat coloring. And that way, if you want to add colors or erase out, for instance, uh, that's all on that colorized layer. Your line art is preserved. It's on a different layer. So I'm gonna show you a time-lapse of some characters that I had drawn. And uh, basically this is just using all of the, the techniques that I showed you up to this point. I'm using those grainy pencil brushes. I'm using that smudge tool. I'm zooming in and zooming out. I should mention that if you pinch, just like when you're viewing images or pictures in your 
photo gallery on your phone or your iPad, uh, you can zoom in or zoom out, and that happens in real time in the uh, in the Procreate app as well. So I'm not doing anything fancy here uh, beyond what I've shown you in terms of the brushes. I didn't make any custom brushes for this. I'm using some of that awesome Nico Rule uh, kind of a chalk brush, and I'm also using the uh, smudge tool with the stucco texture for a lot of this. Even after I get it super clean, then I go in with that stucco smudge brush and I get that cool grainy effect over everything. I used some darkened layers and I used some lightened layers to pull out highlights. And so in that way you get more versatility than you would get with working with pencil and paper or even working with gouache. I've actually found this to be very similar to working with grayscale oil paints, for instance. Uh, only you can kind of have things as permanent or impermanent as you want because you have the multiple layers of glass, so to speak. It almost makes working with oils feel archaic, and I know that's going to upset a lot of traditional artists who are purists, but there's a lot of efficiency with working with digital, and that's, that's why production artists working in video games embrace the digital, because you can iterate and make changes really quickly. But there's still so many cool tricks that I want to show you about how to use Procreate and things that I use to get the kind of art style and, and effects that I'm, I'm showing you here. So let's move on to talk about filters. Now to explain a few more features, I'm going to pull up some artwork that I've been working on for this illustrated novel that I've been working on. This is for The Secrets of Kung Fulio and Escape from Giant's Crown, some illustrated novels that I'm working on. And I've done these drawings entirely in Procreate and uh, don't feel like you have to draw like this. This is just me drawing after 25 years. So, But they will help me to illustrate some, some features. So if we go to our layers, you'll notice that I have all these different layer types. And most of them are set to normal. What you can do is click on that thumbnail and you can merge that down. And what that'll do is it'll just flatten it down into one layer. There are a lot of different features here that are probably more for the advanced user. So we're just going to focus on merging these down. You can create as many layers as you want. But if you want to do an effect, they have to be all on the same layer. So I'm merging them down so that now I've got all of my artwork on one layer. And if we go over here to this little button up here, this is your filters. And in your filters, you can do some neat stuff like create a Gaussian blur. And by dragging from left to right, we can see how that blur is affecting the whole image. We don't actually want a blur effect on this. So let's just go move down the line. We can do a perspective blur, which is interesting if you're trying to get some speed lines. I find it very nauseating. <laughs> You can sharpen the artwork, which will basically just make your edges more crispy and anything that's blurred will be a little bit sharper, but it won't fully restore your image. It's just for creating a little bit more of a crisp uh, look in your drawings. Liquify is one of the most fun to play around with. Now, there are a lot of different features here, but let's say that just for the sake of explanation, we have that set to push. Well, this is great if you want to start maybe adjusting where a character's eyes are, if it feels like they're teeth need to be bigger or the shoulder needs to pop out just a little bit more. You don't have to redraw all of that. This is where digital has a massive, massive advantage over working in gouache or oils or something like that. And um, because you're, you're, you're going to be able to just sort of smear or mush things around a little bit to change pr proportions on things, um, there are a few other things if you want to get a super surreal kind of a result from it, including twirl. Oh my goodness, that is trippy. Um, there's also, uh, I don't know what reconstruct means. Oh, that'll undo your, <laughs> that is really trippy. I just discovered this myself. So uh, that's really cool. Of course, if you don't like anything that you decide on, you click on that brush, which goes back to your painting, because think of it like you were in a different mode. But then you go back to the painting mode and you can undo it using just like we were undoing and redoing our brush strokes, right? The other things that you can do are add colors or color balance. You can add a uh, hue saturation, which this doesn't have any colors in it. So it's not going to actually affect anything um, in this particular drawing because the drawing is in black and white. Uh, but you can add a little bit of color balance to it. So if I wanted to add a little bit of like a little bit of like, maybe I want my, my uh, brushwork to have a little bit of color to it. I'm only working with the shadows here. If I go to highlights and then I, I add a little bit of color to that, you can see, you can see how you can begin to create some really interesting, I mean, that's, that's immediately pretty darn cool uh, because it's no longer just a grayscale image. 
Um, I've added a little bit of color to it. That isn't the same as gradient maps, but um, Procreate does not yet have any gradient maps. So that effect, that explains some, uh, some of the filters. You can, of course, adjust curve. Curves, basically using this graph, you can affect how dark your darkest values are and how light your lightest values are. So you can make the whole image darker that way. This is particularly effective if you're using a colorized layer, you need to overall darken the values. But let's move on to uh, selections. So by clicking on this, you can create selections. And then if you have this freehand button selected, then you can draw out whatever shape you want. You can duplicate that from that. You can feather the edge. You can create ellipses. Or you can, while you have it selected, you click on the little arrow thing. And that allows you to create a little transform. And this is different than that liquify effect because it's basically like you're transforming, you're converting the entire shape. It almost like cut it out. And uh, you can flip that particular thing. You can fit it to canvas. You can do a lot of different uh, things with it down here, including rotate it and things like that. Um, but you could also grab this little green thing here and rotate it that way. Now, a common process that a lot of digital artists will use is the create a selection process. You create a selection and then you use an airbrush to paint in that selection. So I'm gonna show you how to do that here using, this is again using the freehand selections. I'm gonna go ahead and draw out the shape that I wanna make a selection of. And then immediately go over to the brush and make sure that you have an airbrush selected or something like that. Now keep in mind that it has that area selected. So if I'm hitting that with the airbrush, it's only going to paint in that area selected. Now that's all fine and dandy if you wanna paint over your line work, but what if you wanna preserve your line work, but just give color to the grayscale values? Start by opening up your layers window, click on that plus sign up there to create a new layer on top of everything, and then click on the N and then go down to color, set that layer to a color layer. And then if we were to paint with our airbrush onto that layer, we would be adding color to our values, right? But let's combine that with our selection that we were just talking about. We make a little selection around the hat, for instance. And for the sake of this example, we'll switch to a like a blue. And then make sure that we have an airbrush selected. And then we just paint in. We're adding a little bit of blue color to our values. Now we've already done all of our values in grayscale. Now we're just adding color. So let's say that we've finished up our hat. Now we want to move on to uh, maybe colorizing the jacket a little bit. We're going to make a selection around that and then switch back to our airbrush. And because this is on a colorized layer, again, uh, this is a color layer. See the C right there? We've also got it, again, in the tab, it's like checkboxed that it's a color. It's just adding color to the selected area that we, we created a selection around. And what's cool is because it's on its own layer, we can do all those effects that we were talking about. Like we can back off the, the opacity of that layer, or we can uh, change it to a multiply layer. It doesn't have to be a color layer. That's just a way to add color to grayscale imagery using Procreate. And what's cool is all that's on its own layer, so we can also just switch it off if we decide that we don't like that or we want to give it a different color treatment. But let's combine things even further. Let's dig in just a little bit more. We can go back to our effects features and we can go to hue, saturation, and brightness and we can change the colors of everything that we have selected. Now, if we want to change the whole surface, that whole layer, what we would do is go back here to the selection Make sure selection is off and then go to hue saturation. And you'll see how that changes the color of everything. And it's moving it along the color wheel, basically. Now, if you followed other artists on Instagram or if you follow my Twitter channel or my YouTube channel, you know that there is one of the coolest features about Procreate is the ability to replay the entire drawing, the entire drawing, and it's all of its brush strokes in a time-lapse fashion. And the way to do that is to click on the little uh, gear here, the little wrench, go to video and click on time-lapse replay. And what that will do is it will replay everything that was done in this drawing. What's cool about it is that if you drag along, you can actually speed that up or slow it down or go in reverse even. If you have your finger on the surface, you can pull it along the timeline and you'll see everything that's been done on this drawing since the moment it was in 
incepted. <laughs> and I actually worked on this on two different files. So that's why some of the images are already uh, sketched out at the beginning of the time-lapse replay. Now, if you want to export that, what you can do is you can go to the gear, you can go to video and then go down to export time-lapse video. And this will allow you to either create a 30 second video, which is great for Instagram because Instagram tends to prefer videos that are only 30 seconds or so, uh, or your full length, but let's just do the 30 second one. Once it's exported, you can save it to Dropbox or just save it to your files. If you save it as a video, you can then upload that to Instagram really easily from your iPad device. Something else that you might be wondering about, if you have, uh, if you have artwork that you started in another program, you can import that file or you can insert a photo. So if you have something, for instance, from your albums that you wanted to add into your image, you can go here to your add and then insert photo and then either pull up a file from your files or from your photo album on your iPad. Once it's in your files or once it's in here, it creates it into a new layer. And what's cool about that is that you can go to your selection uh, button and then you can actually change out the scale of it, the scope of it. Uh, you can treat it just like a layer. So if I wanted to erase out certain elements of it and then just kind of have it half an imposed image, or if I wanted to set that to a multiply layer or something like that, you can do that. So then suddenly all of my characters are in this interesting setting. And so that's a good way to uh, combine your images if you started on a drawing in a different program or at a different time and you want to combine them together. Uh, you can do that easily by inserting a photo. So that covers the basics of everything that you need to know as a beginner to get started with Procreate. Uh, again, I would highly encourage you to make uh, sheets full of this kind of uh, weirdness that you saw me doing at the beginning. Just get comfortable with doing these sheets full of color blending and smearing stuff around and finding out what colors really, really work interestingly well together and play around a little bit with some of the layer effects that you saw me doing and uh, try some of the other ones on your own as well. And it's all going to be about that exploration. This isn't about creativity isn't something that you just put on rails. It's something where you start to find something that you gravitate towards and you find joy in the playtime with it. And uh, as you learn and acquire new skills and understanding about the tool, you then begin to explore and create on your own until you've got really neat, interesting things that you can't wait to share with other people. I look forward to doing a lot more Procreate videos in the future. If there's anything that you'd like to know about how to use this software, please do send me a comment or leave that in the video uh, and I will get to it in a future video. If you're looking to improve your drawing, maybe you've only drawn on paper. Well, I've, I've gone and made a bunch of easy art lessons and these are really focused on the joy, the fun of drawing. This isn't it's some technical manual. It's not all boring stuff. Like you're gonna be drawing characters, doing awesome stuff in cool poses, in buildings and environments and such. And you're gonna be doing that within a matter of a few hours. It doesn't have to be this complex, uh, boring, frustrating thing like you see in these technical manuals about how to draw. So check out my easy art lessons. They're on paper, but obviously you can do these in Procreate. It's the fundamentals of drawing. You need these skills if you're going to become a professional artist or if you just wanna improve your overall drawing skills and impress your friends and draw cool characters and all that stuff. So check that out over on my Gumroad channel. The link is in the description and there's also a promo code for 20% off of all of those. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell and dudes until next time I'll catch y'all. Man, Yonder Bon and ciao baby. Oh yeah.